Right. I can't have an atheist in my church. If he's preaching against the Bible that I preach as the truth, it can't happen here. Okay. Um, are we still allowed to use the other? You know what? We can't. If this is his presentation that this is the Bible is not true, which is what I've understood for, from what I just pulled off the net, I can't have it in here. I'm really sorry. I did not understand that to be the base of his presentation. I can't have it. Okay. Cannot happen in here. It's not up for discussion. In our, you know, in this church's position. I'm not saying that that's um, the right way to approach it. I'm mm -hmm. just saying from the standpoint of this place and personally my own personal conviction, that's not up for discussion. And I apologize for this. I did, I was under a different impression. I should have done more research and I'm sorry to to halt it at this point, I just can't have it. Work and your studies are vital and important to you, but I cannot have something that's um, arguing the word of God from the Bible to be speaking from our space. Hmm, well, I'm at least respectful of it. I'm not some militant atheist. <laughs>
I was a great fan of The Prisoner, which instilled in me the uh, notion of unconquerable individualism. I will not be pushed, filed, stamped, indexed, briefed, debriefed, or numbered. The uh, refusal to conform unless uh, it was some, something I agreed with anyway. And so there's the green dome where number two lived, and there is little Bub uh, on the uh, balcony. Uh, I was born in uh, Jackson, Mississippi in July of 1954 and uh, grew up there with a happy childhood, reading comic books, enduring elementary school and so forth. And uh, then uh, when I was 10, we uh, moved up to New Jersey. And that was a whole new world and uh, a lot of fun, more TV channels and so on. And uh, shortly thereafter, I was going to a uh, conservative Baptist association church and decided to accept Jesus as my personal savior and the whole ritual and uh, became uh, pretty soon pretty devout as one of these uh, pious teenagers and my church involvement was a lot of fun in many ways. I uh, got a lot of benefits and made great friendships out of it. Uh, then uh, when I went on into high school, I became a kind of a religious zealot and uh, witnessing to my friends and going to Bible studies, and going to church and youth groups and all that. And again, most of it was really a lot of fun. I got interested in the uh, discipline of apologetics, the defense of the faith. And it struck me that, wow, wouldn't it be great if uh, my Christian faith didn't have to uh, be based on just a leap of faith, just believing it by an act of will. Suppose you can prove it's true. Suppose you can show evidence that the Gospels are reliable history and that Jesus really rose from the dead. Well, that would be great for trying to convert other people and it would be pretty handy to uh, quiet one's own doubts. Are you unstable about your relationship to Christ? Do you waver in your relationship to Christ? Or are you totally committed to Christ as Savior and Law? And so I read loads of books on this, and it was utterly fascinating. And eventually, that uh, ushered me into the shaky grounds of critical Bible scholarship. We regarded this kind of study of the Bible as uh, poisonous and uh, subversive, and it would destroy faith. And uh, I uh, began to study it in order to try to refute it and to, I suppose, satisfy myself that uh, it was wrong. These people really had nothing to say and it was really good to continue to be a good Bible-toting literalist. I began, however, to uh, be unable to quiet the doubts that had lurked within me for a long time. And I guess it was in 1977, I just came to the point uh, that uh, I just couldn't accept it. It seemed to me simultaneously that the born-again understanding of life protracted immaturity. It discouraged one from growing up because it encouraged you to just put everything in the hands of God and not go through your struggles yourself. You've been set free of all the past hang-ups, all the past sins, everything else. You've been set free from all of those things. You are now dead to the past life, you're dead to all of that sin, and you are now alive unto God in union with Christ Jesus. Just be spiritual, just be religious. And I, I began to see that that just stunted growth, it didn't work, and it uh, tended to uh, picture the world and life as a kind of great Skinner box with God as the experiment. God was um, playing charades and you were to figure out what he was getting at and set your course accordingly. Well, at the same time, I uh, was finding that all of the arguments that I thought secured my faith in a literally resurrected Jesus who would come again one day and who had endorsed the inspiration of scripture, which was therefore an infallible guide to faith and practice, I began to uh, 
find that these uh, arguments, these apologetics, just seemed not to hold water anymore. It wasn't that I approached it as an enemy, that I wanted to debunk it, it was just the reverse. I began to find that uh, these arguments on which I put so much emphasis just didn't hold up when I would, as I had to do, take the uh, position of someone who I might seek to convince that yes, you could show Jesus rose from the dead, you could show the Gospels were authentic and uh, inaccurate, and in the position of the person needing to be convinced, I began to see this really doesn't work. There's a lot of contrary evidence. There are a lot of uh, prophetic figures like Jesus of whom such legends were told. There are myths of dying and rising gods, characters like Jesus that never existed in history at all. And I realized as I was finishing up this Masters in New Testament that I was just gonna have to go back to the drawing board. And then uh, the challenges arise from archaeology, biology, evolution, uh, literary criticism and all that. Historically, well, of course, I didn't have to wait for that, but I encountered these things uh, in first in the form of uh, threats. Uh, now, don't let your faith be shaken by so-and-so. But then uh, I would read these uh, things, if only to see what was wrong with them, and eventually realized, you know, this, this opens the door quite a bit more. A lot of this stuff that I once thought was a threat, and it was a threat to uh, the simplicity of faith, it actually makes much more sense of the Bible and, and a lot of other things. There was so much in, in the vein of uh, critical perspectives I had never even uh, realized, like the, the idea of uh, the Christ myth theory. I wasn't at that yet. I, I thought that was a crackpot theory. That Jesus is a copy of the pagan myths. What is this argument? Uh, this argument is actually that the story of Jesus, he's, he's not a real person. He never existed. And the way that we can know that is because he, his story lines out with pagan mythology. That's what this argument is about. Jesus looks like another one of the pagan gods uh, that came out of the mystery religions in the first century, or that he's, his story is actually based in these um, previously existent stories about these other gods. So this is an argument that's being made. Now, this argument is very popular. This is a very popular argument. It seemed to me it was like, uh, I know there are nuts that believe the earth is flat, uh, but um, I, I couldn't take it uh, seriously. And uh, the UFOs and the same sort of stuff, Atlantis. And the more I got curious about it, and this was over a long period, the more I was surprised to see that uh, there was something to it. In fact, I tell you what, this is very much like the claims of some uh, liberal theologians and others that the Bible does not actually condemn homosexuality. That it's based on a, a bunch of ambiguous passages or passages so conditioned by an ancient worldview that it's almost like trying to make astronomy out of the story of Joshua where he makes the sun stop revolving around the earth. At first I thought, you got to be kidding me, this has just got to be axe grinding. But I was amazed, but I thought, let me read and see what they have to say. And I thought, holy mackerel, I never thought of that. He's right, this isn't what the passage is about, etc. Well, this was kind of like that, and to my great surprise, I began to consider it uh, plausible that there might not have been a historical Jesus. And the more I got into it, the more I read, uh, oh, for example, ancient Greek novels. Uh, there's a surprising number of them that survived from way back then. I, I would notice fictional uh, tropes like uh, uh, people being entombed alive, thought to be dead, but they weren't, and they were freed from entombment when 
tomb robbers would discover, oh, look, that uh, fancy tomb this rich guy uh, had made for him, it's, uh, it's sealed up. He must have died. There must be uh, rich funerary tokens we can steal. Let's do it. So they come at night and open the thing, and by this time, the, the supposed dead person is waking up. Uh, this happens in at least three of the ancient novels. On the third day, the women of Galilee visited the grave. They found that the stone was cast aside and the body had disappeared. In its place was an angel with a shining face and snowy white robes. Why do you come looking for the living here? He said. For Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. And then they have this big meeting where it's like are you a ghost? Is it really you? I can't believe you're still alive. And I began to think, this has a familiar ring to it. And so all sorts of things I, I began to put together and think, you know, I, I'm afraid this is much worse than people have even made out to me. I, I'm afraid I now think the burden of proof is on the person that would say there was a historical Jesus. The thing is then that there is no evidence that the early Christians borrowed any of this stuff from those ancient mythological religions. On the contrary, in the Jewish world, they believed in resurrection. Pharisees who were in the ascendancy at the time of Jesus believed that all people would be raised from the dead at the end. Nobody had imagined for a moment that it could happen to one person in the middle of history. That is one of several radical innovations, not within the ancient pagan worldview, but within the ancient Jewish worldview. And that's the point where we say something new has happened here. How, as historians, can we explain it? I mean, the ancients thought that at one point there must have been a historical Hercules or Osiris. Herodotus and Plutarch talk about, well, he must have been a king and he must have lived so and so. Well, now we realize now it's, it's just myth. And uh, I think the same is most likely true of Jesus. Well, you know, if you'd have told me a few years before that I would wind up espousing this, I'd say, well, um, I'm going to have to make appointments ahead of time with a psychiatrist because it's crazy. This movement has utterly collapsed today in scholarship. It only persists in popular sensationalistic literature on the internet. Uh, it is not a view held by scholars. I wrote something, some article, I think it was on the, maybe I was just on the Infidel Guy podcast or something, but the word came up and my mother read this and said, you're not an infidel, are you? Uh, but uh, it's, uh, these things helped me uh, get there to the margin. And I, I, I don't want to just say I have been marginalized. No, I, I admit on the bell curve, I'm way out there. I don't need to tell you where this uh, comes out professionally because uh, if you hold any view like either one of these, you just are considered a nutcase. To say that legends are possible doesn't mean miracles aren't. How would you know? But, but even if you say, yeah, for the sake of argument, there could have been miracles, does that mean you have to accept every story of one? Uh, otherwise, you know, if, if that's the case, we're going to believe, uh, well, it's Superman and the Martian Manhunter. We're going to believe in werewolves and leprechauns and alchemy. Uh, so what if there's no real evidence for it? Could have happened? Hey, I got news for you. I mean, there could be flying saucers. There could have been a continent of Atlantis. There could be an abominable snowman. But the mere possibility is not sufficient grounds to believe it.